Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with Logic.tv, and I am beyond excited to share with you something incredible. The stars have aligned with the latest version of Flame, allowing us to work with synth eyes in ways that are sure to stop you in your tracks. As a Flame artist and synth eyes user, I was completely blown away by the efficiencies and sheer speed that you can get in, do the work, and get that data into Flame. New to Synthize 2024.5 is a robust Flame integration that allows you to configure preset locations to simplify the export process of clips from batch and batch effects into Synthize, the import process of Synthize tracking and lens distortion data into Flame, and the update process of revised data from Synthize into Flame. Each of these processes just one right-click menu away. If that sounds incredible, it is. So why don't we jump in and see how it all works. Before we start, note that this workflow requires the first service pack of Flame 2025, which is 2025.0.1. But once you are at least up to that version, then the integration all starts inside of Synthize. There's just a quick setup that needs to take place to properly integrate with Flame and configure the various paths to make sure everything is working as intended. To do that, we head to Scripts, Flame, and Integrate with Flame. A pop-up appears, and we just need to fill out a few path fields here. Project folder is referring to the location that the Synthize project and any necessary other relevant files like 3D geometry or some JSON scripts are saved. Once the project folder is set, we can use the export path tags field to get a little more granular with exactly where the project file should go via some flame related tokens, the list of which is right here on the screen. Most of these should be pretty familiar, project name, project nickname, clip name, real name, batch group name, and workspace, but these two here might not be too self-explanatory, those batch unique ID and batch small ID. These add unique identifiers to help Synthize keep track of what's what, especially in scenarios involving multiple clips being exported. You might not need these all the time, but I think it's safer to get in the habit of using them just to future-proof yourself just in case. So with this in mind, you can stick with the default and keep it simple, but I'll give you an example of the way I'm used to working. I'll set the project folder to my main project directory on the server that holds all of my Flame jobs, and then in the path tags field, I'll use the project token since the name of my Flame project matches the name of its corresponding folder on the server. And inside of there, I like to have a publish folder to keep track of all of my published batch groups, and then a batch group folder, a synthize folder to organize all of my synthize related work in one place for each batch group, and then finally, each file will be named the name of the batch group, the name of the clip, and finally, that special unique batch ID to help with those potential naming conflicts. So that's our project files. Next is any exported clips. If you leave this blank, our exported clips will just use the above location, but I think if I were setting it up for myself, I'd want to specify an explicit location. I'll keep the same server location, and then I'll just copy and paste a similar path tag setup, except instead of going into the synthize folder, I'll make a batch group and clip folder, and we'll have the name of the clips, batch group, clip, and batch small ID. Next, we'll specify what type of file we're exporting as our synthize transfer format. I'll leave it on JPEG sequence since that's what I like to use. And finally, we have a relatively advanced environment variable section. For those of you on the pipeline side of things who want to do some more advanced integration for media locations on different machines, this section is for you. But with all of that set up, we are good to go. Hitting OK gives us a friendly pop-up letting us know we are all set and that if Flame is open, we can rescan our Python hooks to complete the integration with the preferences we've set up. And of course, if Flame isn't open, then the next time we launch, those scripts will be all set up for us. In my case, Flame is open, so we're going to Alt-Tab back into Flame and rescan our Python hooks, and then we are all set up. The Flame and Synthize integration works inside of both Batch and BatchFX. There are a few quirks to batch effects since there are a few more variables involved with batch effects and how it handles clips, but for all intents and purposes, the workflow is the same. Since I'm more of a batch guy, I'm going to be demonstrating the batch workflow. Heading over to batch, I have a shot here that we are going to work on. It's freshly set up, nothing is inside of batch except for the clip, and all we have to do once we've done that initial setup inside of Synthize is right-click on the clip we'd like to work on and select Send to Synthize. Flame begins to export the intermediate image sequence based on the file format we set up in that initial setup stage. And once it's done, we get a friendly dialog box telling us that we are good to go and Synthize should have opened right up for us. I'll just Alt-Tab over to Synthize and here we are, the shot loaded and we are ready to go. It's time for our 3D camera solve. 
If you want to learn more about synthize in general, I'll point you to the incredible Matt Merck over on the Boris FX page. He's done some super informative synthize essentials tutorials that have certainly taught me a whole lot about synthize. So for your general synthize knowledge, head over there and check that out. But for now, I'll keep things real simple and quick and do a nice auto solve. Coming up here to hit the wonderful auto button, synthize will think for just a second and we have a camera track and a healthy point cloud. There are a few steps we might want to take to make the track a little better, but I said we're keeping it simple, so why don't we call this good for now and work on sending this data right over to Flame. If you've exported to Flame from Synthize before, prior to this release, you might be familiar with a file export film box export, or the more Flame-specific Autodesk Action DVE that I was used to using. But now we have something much better. The latest and greatest export for Flame is called Flame 2025 Plus, meaning that it works with 2025.0.1, which is currently the latest release of Flame, and it will work with any subsequent releases going forward. On top of that, since we open Synthize via the Send to Synthize script, Synthize already knows that you're planning to go back to Flame. So with that in mind, regardless of what you may have exported from other Synthize sessions recently, the Export Again feature, keyboard shortcut Shift X, will always initiate the Flame 2025 Plus export when working with the Flame integration. If you explicitly select the Flame 2025 Plus option, you will be prompted to save the project, although the location and file name are already set up for you based on the Integrate with Flame setup. If you use the Export Again feature, that save file and location will be set for you automatically, so one less dialog box to go through each time. Once we initiate the Export Again shortcut with Shift X, or in this case really it's Export for the first time, we are met with this Export Settings screen. Synthize in general is really great at its hover tooltip pop-ups, so if you need a refresher, just hover over and take a look. But just to give you a quick overview from my perspective, right at the top here we have a checkbox to dictate whether we use the default camera inside of Action to receive the Synthize camera data. If you use the default camera, then you won't have two cameras in your Action schematic once you load the data, so I would say there's less clutter and less confusion. But the compromise here is that the default camera, since it's not what Flame calls a 3D camera, is a bit more limiting in how it can handle lens distortion, specifically when dealing with computing a lens center. So if you suspect you might need to take advantage of some of the more advanced lens distortion workflows, consider unchecking this box and dealing with that second camera. The free versus target is referring to the camera type that we have in Flame, just two flavors here. You can limit your trackers, where zero just means don't limit the trackers. You can scale your coordinates similar to how we could in previous exporters. The default is 10, but I personally like 100, so maybe I'll switch that to 100. Enclosed trackers allows us to control whether or not the point cloud or the whole scene comes in with a parent axis you can use to control the trackers and easily group them. Axis scale slash chisel size gives us control over the action node's display axis scale for the axes in the scene, as well as the synthize generated chisel geometry if the rendered trackers checkbox is selected. When you're working with lens distortion, overscan lets you control just how much extra padding you give your plate when the pixels are expanded to go outside the bounds of the image. If it's the first time you're sending a particular shot from Synthize to Flame, Synthize will calculate and set this value for you automatically, but we'll go over this later and it'll make sense. Mesh mode gives you the options on how the geometry is exported, and again, the default should be fine here. The Near Far checkbox allows you to use either Flames Near Far or Synthize's Near Far, so if you haven't set the Near Far in Synthize, leave this alone so Flame can take care of that for you. Save SNI each export just helps you to stay up to date so you don't have to remember to manually save the file yourself when you export. Always Show Controls is referring to this menu here on the exporter, and it gives you the option to skip this menu when using the Export Again feature to update your track. And finally, there's this Force New Exports, where if you've already sent some data to Flame, this checkbox allows you to re-export your track from scratch and essentially start over rather than updating the data that's already in Flame. And that's everything in the export menu. It's a lot to get through and not all of these fields will be completely relevant to your day-to-day, -day, but it's important to have a decent understanding of some of them so you know when to use what. With that out of the way, I'll hit OK and just Alt-Tab back into Flame. We are right where we left off here in Batch and what I'm going to do is just select the clip in question, right-click, and select Receive from Synthize. And right away, we are met with a delightful action node that has been imported for us from Synthize. If we take a look inside, we can see our point cloud, our default camera with some keyframes. And if I look at the result of action, we can see that we're looking through our animated camera and the points are looking good, tracked and all is well. 
If you're like me and you've spent a lot of time navigating through file explorers and the media hub, then your mind might be blown right now at just how quick this was. I know it took me a few days to recover after seeing this for the first time. But now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's start to dig a little deeper. Let's talk about updating. In my case, my Synthize file is still open and I can switch right back into it, but let's talk about another feature just for fun. Let's say that track is the last thing I did for the day and I was very proud of myself and I closed up shop to pick it up tomorrow. It's tomorrow, hello, and I'm looking at my work and let's say the track isn't looking as good as I thought it was. It was a one-click autosolve after all, so I should have known better. Synthize is closed. What do I do now? I could open Synthize manually and navigate to the location we set up and open the project file, but there's a much better way. In a batch where we have our Synthize Flame integration set up, we have the ability to just right-click on the clip in question and select Reopen in Synthize. And immediately we are met with a friendly pop-up telling us Synthize is back, so let's Alt-Tab over to take a look, and here we are, right where we left off. To improve this track, I'll use a nice tool that I've been using a lot lately here under Track Cleanup Trackers. This lets me just let Synthize do the heavy lifting of figuring out what's good and what's not good and making the auto track a whole lot better. With that done, I'll swap this over to Refine and redo the solve. It was a damn good HPix value since this is just an HD clip for ease of use, but it did get better, so that's always a plus. Before we head back, maybe I'll take this one step further. I'll just create a plane roughly where the ground of the scene is. Here in the top view, I'll right click, Creation Object, Plane, and just drag out a plane here. I'll use the W key to transform this just a bit to get it just right, and that's looking good to me. I'm ready to send this back to Flame. I'll use our now familiar Shift X shortcut to export the tracking data for Flame. We are met with our export settings since the Always Show Controls checkbox is enabled, and I'll hit OK to confirm. Let's Alt Tab back into Flame and receive from Synthize to see what happened. Here we are, and if you've been following along, you know exactly what I'm going to do now. I'll select the clip in question, right click, and receive from Synthize. And all of a sudden, our theoretically errant point is gone, the new floor geometry has been loaded, the camera is a bit more accurately solved, and we are updated. It's as easy as that. Before we move on, and we are cruising through this, there are just a few important details to highlight. There's a lot of integration happening here, and one of the things that needs to be kept in mind is that you should do your best not to do any renaming or deleting inside of Flame, or you risk breaking the integration. There are small details like the notes that appear on some of the clips and nodes to help Synthize find certain paths and projects, and there are bigger details like the name of the action node, the name of the camera, or the axes inside of action. Even duplicating the action node itself is dangerous if you plan on using that duplicated action. All of these names need to be controlled from Synthize, and the action generated from importing the data needs to be kept intact, or the integration will start to fall apart. This is also the case for the name of the project that is saved when you hit Export from Synthize. If you want to save different versions of your Synthize file to try things out, which makes sense, you can either treat those new versions as backups, but it's important to keep that original named file intact. If you do start to go down the path of versioning your project files up, some of the integration may still work, but, for example, the ability to reopen in Synthize will only open the originally named file, not the newer ones. So that's one such integration that starts to lose its intention just a bit once you start to stray. Otherwise, now that those little details are out of the way, let's dig a little deeper and talk about lens distortion. I have a slightly different shot here from the same shoot, just so we can start fresh. I haven't done anything to this shot yet, so let's go through the workflow from scratch. I'll right-click and send the Synthize. It exports the JPEG sequence and lets me know Synthize is ready, so I'll Alt-Tab over, and here we are, ready to go. I'll do an auto track to get things going, and that's looking pretty good to start. Now, I'll head down here to the Distortion section, and under Calculate Distortion, I'll click More. There are three models that match Flame's lens distortion models. The standard radial fourth order option is the default for shots that have been sent to Synthize from Flame, so you won't have to worry about remembering to set it. But the other two that can be used are standard anamorphic sixth order, and standard anamorphic merged six order, the three right here at the bottom. I'll leave this on the default and then just calculate a few of these to let Synthize figure out the lens distortion for this shot. I'll close this menu and just refine the track to make sure that it's better than before and it's given me a slightly better HPix value, which is always nice. But important detail here, if you're used to traditional Synthize workflows, you might be tempted to click on the lens workflow to initiate some of the typical Synthize lens distortion workflows with output passes and ST maps. This is not the case with the Flame integration, and you'll see why in just a minute here. 
Let's say we're ready to send this on over to Flame, so I'll just use our Shift X keyboard shortcut, and the defaults are good for me. Just one little note that I'm not modifying the overscan, but it was automatically set to 10. Synthize did the math and concluded that 10 is the number for us in this case, so it's entered that into the overscan field for us. With that in mind, let's hit OK. I'll tab back into Flame, I'll select my shot, right click, and receive from Synthize, and look at that. All of our data brought into batch just like that. Let's take a look at what's happening here. If I select our first lens distortion node, I can see that it's set to the model we set inside of Synthize, and the controls are all filled out for us, thus compensating for the distortion in our image. And it looks like it's working to me. And if you're extra observant, you might notice that we are indeed using some overscan here. If we dig a little deeper and head over to the action node, the point cloud is all set, the camera track is looking good to me, but if I head over to the node prefs for this action and look at the rendering tab, we can see that Synthize has automatically set the action's overscan to 110%, which perfectly matches the resolution coming in from the lens distortion node, even though the resolution is not set the same as back. Some lovely integration, if you ask me. And finally, the redistort lens distortion node is of course all set up and taking in the action's matte output by default, which is hooking up to a comp node comping the work over the original. In this case, of course, there's nothing in my action, but hopefully you get the idea. There's just one other scenario I'd like to present before we move on, and that involves us going back to a shot from our past. From just a few minutes ago, that is. I'll close the other Synthize project, reopen this shot in Synthize, I'll tab the Synthize, and then head over to this More button to calculate some distortion on this shot. I will calculate these few, I will refine away, and I can see the HPix value has gotten even better, which is lovely. Let's send this data over to Flame and see what happens. I'll use our favorite keyboard shortcut, Shift X, but this time we have an interesting message. More overscan needed. If you recall, for the other shot, since it was the first export, Synthize was able to figure this out for us. But since we already have some of the integration over in Flame, there's one step that we will have to type in manually. The message says we need 3%, and it recommends 6%, and if I dismiss that pop-up, we can see that Synthize has already entered the 6% that it needs into the overscan field. I'll hit OK, I'll tab back into Flame, select the clip, receive from Synthize, and now we have a message that says you must do this. It sounds pretty serious, and it is. Due to certain Python limitations, Synthize is not able to adjust the overscan value in action, so we do have to do this ourselves. Again, this is only the case for shots that we already imported that we are now using the lens distortion workflow on, so you won't have to do this all the time. But if you do run into it, this is what it looks like. But in this instance, since 106 is the value, I'll hit OK, head over to Action, Node Prefs, Rendering, and set this value to 106. And when I take a peek at the resolution of this Action node, compared to the resolution of the lens distortion node, we have a match. We've been working our way toward the more advanced features, and there is just one final feature we're going to touch on here in our Synthize Exporter Overview, and that is a pretty cool card and surface workflow. We are able to add a card in Synthize, which will set up the action's media layers to allow us to use media we can add to the scene. Let's take a look at how it works. I'll switch back to Synthize in our familiar scene here. In order to add a card, I need to switch to the perspective view, so I'll just take over the left view here and switch that viewport over to perspective. I'll use my mouse controls, middle mouse button, and alt right click to maneuver around the scene. And let's say I want to add a card here on this wall on the right. I'll right click, head to other modes, and enable add cards mode. Now, when I drag a lasso around a few of the points here, Synthize will use the position of the points to place a card that does something of an averaging of the points to position it to align it properly. With this card placed, I'll use the blue rectangle to scale that card to be placed just a little more how I want it to be. That is looking good to me. One of the keys with this add card workflow is actually in the name of the 3D object here in Synthize. When a geometry here in Synthize begins with the name card or surface, that's when the media will be added to the action node when we send this data over to Flame. So you can either use this add card workflow or manually name your geometry yourself. Just note that it can't have an existing texture. There's one more thing to keep in mind, and that is the resolution of this newly created geometry. Everything will get a lot more accurate if the resolution of what we're putting into the scene in Flame is the same resolution as what Synthize is creating here, and there's a tool for that. Under Script, Flame, Set Card Resolution, you can specify the resolution of the media you plan to use for this card. In my case, I'll leave it on 1920 by 1080 and maybe set this to same width since I like the width I've set up. The resolution and aspect ratio of that card is set, 
And with that all set up, I'm ready to send this back to Flame. I'll use the Shift X shortcut once again, and these settings are looking good, so I'll hit OK. I'll Alt Tab back into Flame, select the clip, right click, receive from Synthize, and right away we can see our action media layer ready to receive the media. I'll just generate a gradient here as proof of concept. And there we have it. The surface is in, it's the right aspect ratio, and it is expecting the right resolution. We got through a whole lot in this tutorial, but in the interest of time, we can't have these videos going too long. I didn't cover everything. If you want to learn more, I'll point you to the user manual. It can be a bit daunting coming in at over 800 pages. There's a lot to synthize, that's for sure. But it's really not that bad to navigate. Here in Synthize, under Help and User Manual PDF, first make sure you've turned on the table of contents in whichever program you're using to view the PDF, and then you can navigate to the Contents section, the Exporting to your Animation Package section, and finally the Flame 3D section. This is a great reference to not only explain all the different settings and menus, but also to take what I showed you today and go even further. This is the very first release of the Synthize Flame Exporter, and it is, in my opinion, pretty darn impressive. If you're using this tool and you're finding that something is not working as intended or something could be better, you can head over to the Boris FX Discord and the Boris FX forums. They have a Synthize Discord channel and a forum category for all your Synthize related questions, concerns, and improvements. If you want to pick my brain, you can find me over at the Logic Discord or the Logic forums, and I'm more than happy to help. Otherwise, thanks for being here with me, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next tutorial.